Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We have e to the power x equals x squared plus 2x plus 2 all over 2 and we're going to be solving for x values. Before we start solving the problem, I just want to say thank you very much for your heartwarming, sincere comments to my most recent post. And here's the solution. We have an exponential function on one side, e to the power x, and a polynomial on the right hand side. Obviously we can put the one half in the front and write this a little differently, but just think about this equation at this moment, try to find a solution. And I'm pretty sure, you guys are very ca capable by the way, I'm sh pretty sure you can find a solution, right? But hold on to it. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at a couple different things and try to find all the solutions. Okay, so whenever you have an equation like this, uh, you can't solve this using standard methods because this is a non-standard equation. So what are we supposed to do? We can guess and check, but that doesn't guarantee all the solutions, right? And we may not find anything at all. That's another problem. So we're going to go ahead and do the following. I'm going to work on the right-hand side, and I kind of want to split it up. So let's go ahead and write x squared plus 2x plus 2 all over 2 as x squared over 2 plus 2x over 2 plus 2 over 2. It's kind of like separating a fraction, the numerator of a fraction into different fractions. And it's the opposite of adding two fractions, uh, not two, it's, it's the opposite of adding fractions with the same denominator basically, right? So notice that this can be simplified a little bit and it becomes x squared over 2 plus x plus 1. As is, this may not make much sense to you, so I'm going to go ahead and reverse it and see what that looks like. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. And if this is not good enough, I'm going to improve this a little bit more and write this as 1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x to the second power over 2 factorial. And obviously, the first term can also be written as x to the power 0 divided by 0 factorial. I think we all agree that 0 factorial is 1. It's not like 0 to the power 0 where we have a huge argument, you know, very controversial issue that I made a video on and some people claim 0 to the power 0. Anyways, that's a different story. But I hope this form kind of rings the bell. Does it? If it doesn't, then we're going to talk a little bit more about it. And here we come to talk about the Maclaurin series. What is a Maclaurin series? Basically, it's kind of like an infinite polynomial uh, that uses zero as uh, our point. So, and if you just write a series instead of using powers of x, if you just use powers of x minus a, then you can call it a Taylor series. And so basically, Maclaurin series is a special form of Taylor series or Taylor polynomials. So here's how it goes. We have e to the power x, and that can be written as 1 plus x, x over 1 factorial plus x to the second over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. Uh, ad infinitum, is that how you say it? So on the right hand side, we have an infinite polynomial. And why is it infinite? Because if you have a finite polynomial, it cannot equal e to the x. It's an exponential function. Obviously, for pretty much any value of x, this is going to be an irrational number, right? But we have an infinite polynomial, which we call a series in this case, right? Or a Maclaurin series to be specific. So how do you compare these two things? Well, part of this occurs here. So that's what I have. Awesome, right? Not the whole thing, but part of it. Well, first of all, you might be questioning, like, where does this come from, right? Let me tell you. And we've done this before, but let me just quickly show you. If you call f of x equals e to the x, and just write it as a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared, so on and so forth, just differentiate it, you're going to get the same thing. But when you differentiate the infinite polynomial term by term, you're going to get a sub 1 plus 2a sub 2x, so on and so forth, and then differentiate it again. And every time you do, you're going to get the same function on the left, but on the right-hand side, you're going to get a different polynomial. Now, if you replace 
x with 0 in each of these expressions. If you go ahead and, oops, that didn't work well. Anyways, you get the idea. So if you go ahead and replace x with 0 here, and here, and here, of course, you're going to do that here too. That's going to give you e to the power 0. So this is always going to be 0, right? I mean, e to the power 0, which is 1. But from here, you're going to get a sub 0, because everything else is going to be 0 when x is 0. So you're going to get a sub 0 equals 1. And then when you replace x with 0, everything except for this one is going to cancel out. That's going to give you a sub 1 equals 1. And then here, you're going to get 2a sub 2 equals 1, because everything else is going to cancel out. And this is going to give you a sub 2 equals 1 half. Great. So now we got the first three coefficients. And notice that those are actually the coefficients that we have. 1, 1, 1 half. And then you're going to bring in the powers of x, so on and so forth, right? You get the idea? Hopefully you did. Now, here's what we're going to do. Our equation says, hey, this is equal to e to the power x. It's kind of funny, right? Trying to write with the eraser. And we do know that e to the power x is much more than this, obviously. So we can go ahead and replace e to the x with this infinite polynomial, which is going to give us this, which is given in our expression as e to the power x, right, equals 1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and much more, right? Infinitely many terms. Now here's what happens. We get rid of the first three terms on the right and everything else or everything on the left, which leaves us with a big fat zero, right? on the left hand side and I think we can kind of make that happen by let me see how we made that before I I'm not sure I anyways you get the idea so we're this is going to be a giant giant zero okay which is going to give us the following starting here let me go ahead and erase this area so we can kind of write it down Get a clean copy. All right. Awesome. Now, here's what we have. x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. This is, an, again, an infinite polynomial because we've only taken out a finite number of terms and the rest is still an infinite polynomial and that's going to equal 0. By the way, this equation can have infinitely many solutions, right? Because it's an infinite polynomial, and obviously it has infinitely many complex solutions, sort of, right? And But we can basically take out an x, that's going to give us x squared over 3 factorial plus x cubed over 4 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. And what happens is you get equal to 0. But something interesting happens. From here, we get immediately x equals 0, right? Because it satisfies, but if you look inside, you can actually take out another x. So instead of taking out an x, I could probably take out a bigger term, which is going to be x cubed, which is the largest one, right? So when I take out x cubed, that's going to give me 1 over 3 factorial plus one, x over 4 factorial plus x squared over 5 factorial, so on and so forth. And... This polynomial is actually going to be, here's the, here's the interesting part, if x is going to be positive, then all these terms are positive, so they'll never equal 0. But can x be negative? That would be a good question. The problem is the terms are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Anyways, this gives us x equals 0 as a solution. And let's go ahead and take a look at a graph, and of course the result from Wolfram Alpha, yay, x equals 0 happens to be the only solution. And here's the graph of our exponential with the parabola, and they intersect at a single point. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.